Sydney featuring Morris Babyface taking you back in time on that song they called Wonder Money. Well, my guest yet decided that he wants to do a remix of that song uh, with Sydney. So hopefully I'll give them the chance to do that. Hopefully I'll connect him to Sydney and then he do that too. Maybe after the show. Uh, well, <laughs> we're going to have a conversation with the man Kofi Kratin, the independent candidate for the elections, um, uh, the past elections. Mason led administration of the Electoral Commission for reasons that we already know. Well, he's still not giving up. He believes that he has something to share with the rest of the world, especially Ghana, to take us from the doldrums to another position where we belong, he says. Before we do that and get to introduce him, start a conversation, I have a quick birthday shout out to do. Um, the man Thaddeus is to be your brother and from your wife, Lady June of a Malena Children's Haven, uh, the one at Wager, uh, that's your wife, and she shared your picture this morning celebrating you, wishing you the very best, and uh, happy blessed birthday to you. So, Thaddeus presence, enjoy your birthday, have a good one, um, may the Lord continue to shine his presence upon you, have a good day, and uh, enjoy the celebration as well, okay? All right, especially from your wife to you, by the way, okay? That said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Kofi Grantin. Good morning, sir. Thank you, sir. How are you doing? By grace, I'm well. I like your green in Ghana. Yeah, it's green. Yeah, I'm, combinations. I'm, I'm planting for food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you not the near Greek minister? Yeah. Oh, you? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. I'm just, I just want to represent my country well. Mm, so, because I've never seen any other um, dressing apart from African kind of prints. A few times I've seen you in suit. Uh, now more transitioning into the local. Yeah, that's yeah. Africa is beautiful. Africa is yeah. Incredibly beautiful. Mm. And but how come a beautiful it. country that you want to change? Well, we can always get better. Mm. We can always, uh, okay. uh, Diego, um, with everything that's going on in the world, we want to position our youth mm. uh, to be competitive with the rest of the world. Indeed. And mm. right now it looks as if we have dislocated the youth uh, mm. from the rest of the world, and it's not fair to them. Mm. And uh, we need to set the stage up for them right. so that awesome. their lives could be better. Um, let let me take you back on the last conversation we had the last time we came here. You made a very stunning uh, observation that even the Western region alone, mm. the resources that we have, is capable Absolutely. of transforming the entire nation. Entire Just world. Just this morning, um, there's a story that we did that the people of Apremdo in the Western region woke up and discovered that there was this dark substance, mm. crude, um, in the soil. Wow. And they've sent it to actually to Maoria for investigations to find out what exactly it is. And they're hoping that if should it be crude, 
So you know there are benefits some development to happen at the prime the people and all that. Yeah, this is sad. Are you not excited that we are finding crew that is time? No, I'm not excited. I'm saddened because you see ultimately Western region should be a big tourist attraction. You see this place they found crude. Mm -hmm. They should not do anything to it except for wall it out. And that also mean that relocating the entire community. Well, when you wall it out, uh, when you go from, have you have you been to Western region? Uh, once or twice, yes. Okay. Especially Takradi. So when you relocate them and you put them in a beachfront property with AC and amenities, parks, hospitals, police station, markets, shopping malls. I think it would be better, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you just found crude. We could have just gotten millions of dollars from that by just making it a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. Hey, come see how oil comes into yeah. this country. Not touching it, just walling it. That's what smart people will do. Mm. So in effect, those there are not smart. No, um, not the people. Are the leaders. Are not, the leaders. Are leaders are no, smart. of course they're not. Because how much crude do we have? We have so much oil. Have we seen the gains, the benefits? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you brought it up, right? So I'm okay. asking you. You go to Western region. There, it's one of the poorest regions in the whole country. I it was rather the northern part. It's one, uh, one of the part. Have you? You haven't been there. They are craters. I could go on my phone now and show you. For those of you who are watching me, in Crawford Junction. Yeah. If you know in Crawford Junction, actually you could do a Google Maps on in Crawford Junction right now and see the craters. When we're done with this, I'll show you on my phone. Crawford, that's where the uh, Kwame Nkrumah comes from. No, that's... Um, Oh, actually, yeah, that's yeah, the home yeah. Of yeah, 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 you're right, Uncle yeah. Full. Oh, that's even worse. I didn't even. Oh, it, anyway. Yeah, anyway, so what I'm saying is this: when you get to that place, you ask yourself, man, why? What? What? What is wrong with the infrastructure? They are taking slabs of chunks of land masses mm. from the mountains, mm. and so when the rains come down, it washes the down onto the where it's covered with mud. You would think the place doesn't have mm -hmm. any uh, asphalt, so, so, yeah. but it's because it's been because it's in the sides of the mountains. The same thing is happening on debris. I, I know, but with this, <laughs> we're talking Western region. So yeah. it, it, this is something that's happening all over. And they have, their soil is so rich. So they, I don't know who sold it, but the land has been sold to these Chinese companies. And they are taking the earth mm -hmm. and they're making tiles with it. Mm. You see? Yeah. So on the road, huge container cars, trucks, and I flagged them down and I stopped them. I said, what's in here? Where are you guys going with this? He said, oh, my sir, I had a quiet house. I said, why not, you know, I engaged them. That's how I found out. It's like clay, but it's, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Ah, man, it, it's painful. So you just take it, bring it to the factory and they make it into towels, whether it's for export or whatever, you, nobody knows. But I know that the people in the region are not benefiting from that because you could just tell by looking at the environment. Yeah. It's well, I asked the Apremdo conversation based on the rainfalls. Mm -hmm. So I, I think two weeks ago there was a rainfall that caused that havoc in the area, the place got flooded, and I'm thinking that's what's washed there the upper soil, and hence they're finding that. Yesterday we were, we were inundated with another badge of hours of rain, mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure you might have chance upon some videos and all that. According to our um, house, works and housing minister, Bacha Senso, he says that we need about $5 billion to solve the drainage system here in Ghana. If you were in power, what would you do differently? Oh man, I, it, 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 it's so painful talking about this um, because with these leaders, I think they've lost all credibility for their analysis. 
okay number one I don't believe that okay as no one in Ghana should and the reason is no I mean listen we have an administration who came into power six years on they did not know we were going to IMF no we just woke up and IMF was at our door hey this is IMF I'm here to I'm hearing you made a prediction four years ago, three years ago, that Absolutely. they were going to go to IMF. I, but this is not rocket science. Diego. Yes, boss. We don't have any industry. We don't have... We have... We have, we have one D1F ongoing. Uh, I'm told we have 120. Diego, listen to me. Okay. So then we have 11 million people unemployed. One D1F, 11 million people unemployed, those two don't go together. 56% of the population we have in Ghana are 24 year olds and below. And this is what I explain as a demographic catastrophe because you have 11 million unemployed, you have 56%, which is 17.3 million people who are going to add on to this 11 million, that's 28 million. And we don't have any infrastructure to sustain them. In the next 10, 15 years, if you think IMF now is a problem, we haven't even begun scratching the surface to the problem that's ahead of us. Because you solve this IMF problem, this demographic catastrophe that's coming, we haven't laid a foundation for it. The 17.3 million people are going to be added to the 11 million. We Didn't Ken Furata come and say, hey, we don't have any jobs for you? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're going to have a country where we're closing into 50 million and more than half is unemployed. Do, do, you, do you see? And they're going to have babies. That's it. Listen, poverty doesn't stop people from uh, preservation. Right? Mm -hmm. Guess what? They're going to have babies and so can you imagine a country where fifty percent of them and for the, at least for the few who make the money, we have over close to ten million right now who make less than five CDs a day. Well the the average wage in Ghana should be two cities. How do you survive? I, I bought two plantains. Mm -hmm. Yes, two, a couple of days. Me, me, yeah, oh, oh, the, the, the normal okay, plantain okay, that they okay. sell at Gobe, you know, <laughs> they, they use for the Gobe, okay. red, red. Okay. And there's some big there's ones like this, cities. two for 10 cities. Oh, that great minister says the whole tuba is going for 10 cities. Oh, please, this guy is so, listen. So, do you need that great minister? He shouldn't, he shouldn't be known. The guy should have been fired long time ago. He's part of the economic management team. But this is the problem. The people in the economic management team are all clueless. All clueless. They all should be fired. Really? Are you surprised that I'm making a statement? Um, if you were president, you wouldn't fire them? Look at what they have done. Now, the debt, back the to debt to GDP mm -hmm. is 80%. So, 2018, our uh, um, economy was around 6.3%. 2019, we did 6.5%. That saw some kind of increase. Okay, so stop right there. All right. Those numbers are so deceptive. What, 6.5, 3.5, what does that mean? The growth. Growth of, of what? The economy. Oh, nonsense. Let me tell you something. You don't agree that force majeure or, oh, uh, uh, or natural disasters okay. could okay. So take us me, to where we let are me, now? Let me help you with something. Okay. Growth means nothing when it's not tied to development of the indigenous people. Okay. You see, when these guys come and spit these numbers, oh, 4.6%, this, oh, the aggregate of this, it's all nonsense. And let me prove to you why. Because the companies that have caused the growth in Ghana are all, for the most part, not Ghana-owned. When they make their money, next day, 
it goes. Mm. We don't even have any limits for them to keep in terms of keeping some of the money here. If I were president, no company can take 100% of their money out. Their gains, 80% should stay here. And do what with it? Develop. If you, if you make bread, if you supply flour, and you made 10 cities, okay. you can't take 10 cities out. Go make more flour companies so you can employ more people. Then that should tie into the contract you signed before you start. Ah, economic management team? <laughs> oh, well, you, you seem to be advocating for these guys. I'm not. They, they did not? I'm just asking questions. That's oh, you are? Know. Okay. Yeah. So, but do you, do you see where the problem is now? So, the foreign exchange that we could have gotten in this country, these guys take all that foreign exchange and they leave the country with it. Mm. And we're back to zero. Matter of fact, we're not back to zero. We're back to minus. Because we, don't we have a deficit? 128% mm -hmm. of the receivables in Ghana go to pay interest on our existing debt and public sector workers. That brings me to my next point, which is the government is too bloated. You have 130 plus ministers. These guys are magicians in their own pockets because they're not, certainly not helping Ghana. What, what do they do? The defense um, Honorable Kujo Pankrumah gave with respect to that was that um, at the moment, as we speak, there were some measures put in place by the finance minister somewhere in March that includes the fact that all budgets by the who? have been cut by, by the finance who? minister. By who again? Ken Oferata, the finance minister. That guy is a has failure. Been, you has should been not cut by 30%. Expenditure cut by 30%. Uh, their full allowances cut by 50%. Uh, all those things were done. So okay. if you say we still have a bloated... Right. So first of all, you're not even allowing us to even answer questions because everything you say, it's a big question mark. So let's go back to okay. the credibility of this guy called the finance minister. This is the same guy who has been in power for six years. Now, Diego, yeah. if every year, I'm sure you do a checkup, medical checkup. Yeah. And based on the medical checkup, you're able to make changes in your lifestyle. So if you go to see the doctor and the doctor says, hey, listen, your, you know, your level is uh, then you know the changes you need to make exactly. to. Now, Kenoferata being the finance minister, you would have thought his decisions were based on science, demographic numbers, data. growth data. <laughs> from, that makes up the growth, yeah. right? Yeah. So when you take a look at patents and you know, with your team of experts make a decision that you know what these numbers don't look good we got to steer it here right mm -hmm. so analysis mm -hmm. the first year mm -hmm. the second year make adjustments the third year make another adjustment the fourth year see the fifth year <laughs> so now the sixth year comes and we're going to IMF and everybody's like oh IMF I mean how did this happen it, what happened with the adjustments from so year one to I'm year six? Is that, um, so this guy is a failure. You don't believe that the force majeure has to do with what is happening, the COVID-19. Okay. Oh, gosh. That's a natural yeah. disaster. You can't do anything about it. Yeah. Because there okay. was a kind so, of a growth from 2018 to 2019, all of a sudden, which lasted for about two years. All right. You, sign, you sound like the failure. Uh, we we are having in Ghana. Now, let me tell you something, Diego. Do you know that there were so many countries that became billionaires overnight from COVID? Yes, and uh, the online became the thing of the okay. day. So, because they were positioned. Genius is not when you wait for something to happen and exploit. Genius is preparing. So when something happens, you're in a position to take advantage of. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, were we in a position to supply masks? Did we did we have companies making masks? Mm -hmm. uh, is that yes or no? Okay. <laughs> okay. So yeah. did we, did we have questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. So do we have a company supplying sanitizers, uh, PPEs? Uh, all, that whole string, we didn't have any company that did that. And if we had, it didn't even meet a threshold. 
Because if it did, then we will be, imagine if we were the suppliers to the rest of West Africa. Can you imagine how yeah. much money we'd have made? Yeah. So now all of a sudden COVID would have been, hey, we made so much money, Ghana, from COVID. Uh, now we can afford to have entrepreneurial development centers for all the youth and they can make money. And if you're a woman, you give birth, you get paid 300 cities a day, uh, a, a, a month to help you with your maternity. Wouldn't that be pretty? Because we took advantage of COVID. COVID would have been something that helped us. Now you have these clueless leaders who sit there wait for anything to happen. And then they say, oh, we blame it on this. Now recently is Recently Russia, Ukraine. Why are we dependent on Russia, Ukraine? For your wheat. Yeah, gas. We, can, we can't, we, we, okay, but all of that we could have, right? Yeah. So now you come, you would have thought maybe after COVID, we would start thinking this economic destruction team would have sat down <laughs> and planned. Team. Of course, that's all they're doing. Okay. They didn't sit down to plan. You have 275 parliamentarians who go into parliament. We pay them not anything less than 50,000 cities a month. Mm -hmm. From their benefits and their gas. They didn't get an extra gas at the end of four years. And what did they do? 275 brains. You can use one brain, Jack Ma, mm -hmm. Alibaba, uh, Warren Buffett brain in, 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 in uh, Oklahoma, Nebraska, Nebraska, or Elon Musk, mm -hmm. right? Just like their that. brains alone, one brain can replace all these 275 brains. Because what did they do in parliament? I want to be able to be a mosquito in parliament to just hear what, what did they say? What did they do? That's why we are proposing that we're going to scrap. Listen, at this point, it's two parliamentarians per region, 40. We're going to downscale the 16 regions back to 10 because it was absolutely senseless to go from 10 to 16 because you gave no value to the What's decentralization so the country gets some support sort of. go to go to these regions and find out what they've gotten since the, I mean, the new ones the yeah like OT, the <laughs> they didn't get anything so it, you have a plate you have a ball of kinky you want to Three cities, by the way, mm -hmm. three cities, yeah. bowl of kinky. Yeah. kinky so uh, you have a bowl of kinky you want to put in a plate mm -hmm. and you get more plates and you divvy up plates. The Kufado's government is doing, oh, listen, you guys want to eat kinky? Okay, so the little money that's left, it would be a smart idea to get more plates. Hey, get, buy they, buy the plates and they split how many of us six seven split the kinky up oh we finished the kinky we still hungry what get get more plates let's split it up again you see Do instead you of using two ministers per region sorry a minister per two regions that one no no i say two to two two parliamentarians okay. per region how are you going to do that what how not tell us tell us how it's going to work well, because you see, we've given this power to Miss Jean Mensa to go ahead and say, ah, listen, I want to split. Hey, split district. Before you, then we have to find somebody for the district. Mm -hmm. Then we have to pay them person. and give them a car. We are a country of 31 million people. We have 18 Supreme Court judges. Really? 300 million plus in America, and they have nine wow you, you guys are such brilliant you these guys are amazing well, as developed as they are so wait is that the argument no i'm just if you're not as developed then maybe perhaps you should cut your code according to your size did, 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 are, you, are you familiar with that saying uh, yeah. wow how you, you didn't consider yeah, according to your clothes that you have you cut yeah how, because and and what's magical with these guys is the residence that's the estimate was six hundred thousand dollars per residence we borrowed money to build the residence mm -hmm. and then we had to bring in the bulldozers 
to bulldoze all these residences down because hey the president has a good idea I didn't say that. Oh, you're what, about did you, to. what did you, you say? About to. Oh, That's okay. where you I, Listen, I, this guy. I this just guy. Sum it up for you. Uh, uh, I'm a you see? Uh, okay, now he's a I'm prophet. A prophet yeah. Yeah, so, uh, what did you say again? Say that again. <laughs> I, no, no, no. He's he's ahead of me. Okay. So we bulldoze this whole place that we're gonna build at National Cathedral. So. And that You're probably also going ahead of me. I was going to talk about the National Cathedral. Okay, so let me wait. I'll minutes. wait for you to so get this. So let's still stick with the IMF. So, so at this moment, what, what do we do? Okay, at this moment, we fire more than eighty percent of these ministers. Fire them. More than eighty percent. Oh you yeah. Mentioned there were one hundred and thirty-one or thirty one hundred and thirty ministers. I lost count. I'm so. not counting anymore. My calculator only goes to a hundred. Who are you firing? Okay. Why don't we start with who do we need to have? Okay. So our, what we are proposing is 10 ministries, 10. Mm. Agriculture, education, energy, employment and entrepreneurial development, finance, foreign affairs, trade and industry, health, uh, interior, justice. I didn't hear anything about uh, technology. No, Abu Dhabi has a technology minister and it's changing the face of technology over there. We're in the realm of technology. So I was hoping you're going to add that to your ministers. Okay. So, okay. So first of all, just because something is not a ministry doesn't mean that we don't have a focus on it. Okay. It's an agency. So which parts of your ministers will have that focus? It will go on the interior and all education. Hmm. Would, that, would they have that mandate to do? Okay, what's a mandate? I don't understand. I said, um, there's a whole ministry on its own, I think. Okay, so because that's exactly, that's a problem. So you if think you add that to it, wouldn't that be overbearing for whoever's going to handle that position? Bearing, or how do you, you, how do you, how do you, how do you figure out bearing? Bearing doesn't come from a ministry. Bearing comes from your competence and what you're functional to do. It seems to have the men. Oh please stop! Don't don't please don't. They that said they phrase, have the men. So no, we have. You said, we don't have the men. Okay. We have the brains. The brains. Oh, it's not about men. Okay, no, it's about, it's the about brains. brains. Okay. So in this case, it could be any. Listen, mm. with all these ministries, I will be able to run all these ministries with Those tertiary brains. tertiary students. Oops. Yeah. That's a low blow. Oh. That's the problem. You see, the problem is, is what does a minister do? What is it? So now let's go. Let's take a minister and put it right here mm -hmm. and take a brain of a graduate and put it here. Now, this brain of a minister has to have competent and functional trained, specific training related to relevant to development, right? Mm -hmm. So they have to go through a process. So if you take that brain and you process it the same way like this brain, which is a student, don't you get the same effect? Experience counts here, don't you think? Has it counted? With that graduate, he or she may not have that much of experience. Okay, so where does experience come from? Maybe the minister. Have we the seen brain. it? Have we seen it in ministers? We are we yeah, in IMF? You, did you say? Oh well, we are at IMF. We haven't gotten the bailout yet. So, but for sixteen times, mm. do it once. I mean, you go to IMF once. Shame on you. <laughs> go to IMF twice. Shame, shame on, on me. IMF sixteen times. But there's a con conversation ongoing that IMF is not necessarily to give you progress. It's just supposed to stabilize your economy. Oh, that makes it even worse. The stability worse. comes in and it's up to you to grow. So what does that mean? That means for all the 16 times we give you stability, what did you do with it? Unfortunately, we are here. Okay. So that means that the brain that took you to IMF cannot be the same brain that fixes the problem that caused us to go to IMF. Got it. NDC and PP, they cannot fix the problem. 16 times, it says, 
Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Fool me 16 times? They have redefined the meaning of fool. They have redefined the meaning of incompetence. They have redefined the meaning of cluelessness. These guys are not good for purpose. Period. Listen, the governments of NDC and MPP have been a legitimate legalized sovereign Ponzi scheme. Hmm. Ponzi scheme. Oh, oh, of course. Because listen, li listen, listen to me. You mess up once, you go to Uncle IMF, bills you out. You mess up again, twice. You go to Uncle IMF, he fixes your problem for you. Now, if you had any good, legitimate, thinking, adult, country-loving, functional, competent, science-based, data-driven, human-centered group of leaders, you would have thought after the second, now, the excuse, you know, once we didn't know it was coming, twice, okay, now we're figuring the craft. Three times, oh, now we perfected it. I would give them all three wash. But after the third time, hmm, I mean, if, do you have children? Yeah, I do. Okay, so you, 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 you speak to your children, like I'm feeding my little three-year-old, um, she drops a bottle. My first reaction is, oh, that was, that was an accident. Let me take the bottle, let me put it back. Uh, she, she, she looks at me, I mean, I'm not paying attention. She drops the bottle again. I said, wait, did I put the bottle back on there the wrong way or, okay, so now let me really take a look where I'm putting this bottle. So you now all of a sudden you become conscious. Mm -hmm. Now you put the bottle in the middle of her table. Mm -hmm. And then you watch her, and then she's eating, she looks like she's paying attention to her food. You turn around, ah, she drops it. Oh, wait a minute. Now, I know what, you, you having fun seeing me go down and bending my, so now I take it from that table, I put it somewhere else, I say, here, go ahead, eat your breakfast, right? Mm -hmm. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. Finito. Yeah. The first two times I wasn't paying attention, so I didn't realize that, but after the third time, 16 times? Now is putting the bottle there is a problem. That's IMF. Because they have seen that, you know what, anytime you drop the bottle, oh, we're going to put it there. What's in it for them? Hmm. Okay. Do you see? Do, okay. do you see? Well, and now the person who's pushing the bottle off the table, the child who's is having fun, says, oh, hey, I do it anytime. Put it back. There is an inherent pathological benefit that they have linked to this uh, uh, mm -hmm. and the response, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And this is why I call the Ponzi scheme because you see, you squander the money. Whose money? It's our money. Mm -hmm. so we have about two billion, and we're supposed to be paying an interest. And plus, and plus, million. two billion. What's two billion going to do? The public purse alone, I mean, to pay wages alone would take, it's about, what, even if it's about it five, of the if, even if it's $100,000 a month, mm -hmm. in 12 months we're done with uh, billion. The, the, the 1 billion, mm -hmm. uh, you know. Okay. So half of the money is going to go to, you're going to be back in the same place. And you see how they did it? Come the other, um, there we are trying to get like the VATs, mm -hmm. you're supposed to generate money and all that. So. Yeah, but it's not so much how much money you're getting, the bucket is leaking. So what this this suggest? idea, this idea of getting a bigger bucket, mm -hmm. it's not going to solve the, because you haven't plugged the leak yet. How difficult is what that? What is the leak you want them to fix as they engage the Corruption, enemy? management, prudent management. And then offload. How do you to solve corruption problems? Very easy. Tell us about it. Okay, this. so now let me. Uh, it's so easy to fix this problem. I'm blown away. I mean, the, Have, are, uh, the Western people are still encountering corruption problems. Because they want can to. We, can we be able to win ourselves off corruption completely? Or you can I, probably okay. die down a little bit. Okay. Or a bit more. So, okay, so let's address that. 
corruption everywhere there's a human being there's a possibility of some malfeasance mm -hmm. corruption right yeah. the problem is not to totally eradicate or oh, the goal because you will have human beings and as human beings come they come with their personalities and characters and right mm -hmm. but the problem is the moment it's identified it's managed okay okay mm -hmm. so that's when you have a, a system because they're human beings human beings they will steal people would do stuff but if they steal and you, there's no consequence then it becomes a habit then becomes a crisis and then we go to IMF so what we are proposing is have you heard of uh, 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 President Nanado firing anybody from corruption in the not, six not years yet. okay so do you think now the accounting general's office have told us that every year we lose three to four billion dollars mm -hmm. out of corruption mm -hmm. so how come no one has been fired meanwhile you got your friend what's his name again uh, doctor uh, uh, head of the economic management team your, your good friend <laughs> okay <laughs> the biggest clown friend. so he comes and says I've digitized everything now the 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 ideal and the reason why you digitize is to and I'll prove it to you is to reduce corruption because mm -hmm. then there's transparency there's a paper trail mm -hmm. so has now if we still hemorrhaging three to four billion dollars every year what was the purpose of the corruption it hasn't changed that where we were in terms of corruption has not changed since digitization come uh, came in so yeah, we are accruing since we are creating a lot more money Okay, so, so the that's the office, uh, DVLA, the but the, again, uh, you go to ports. my bucket concept that just because you're getting a bigger bucket to fetch the water, doesn't mean the water stays in the bucket. See, you are looking at oh, listen, we, the bucket is bigger. Okay, that's understood. So we, if we plug the leak, we could have done so much more with the water that we're fetching. Yeah. But a bucket is still leaking. So it not we could beg we get forget the bucket we could get a barrel, you get a barrel, it's still leaking. Mm -hmm. So the problem, the short term problem is fix the leak. How difficult is that? Now you ask me a question. Okay. So corruption are in three layers. Before we even get into the arena of solving corruption, the person who heads the country should be corrupt less. Can there be any? Oh, I'm glad you're saying that. So you know, or you confirm the fact that Nanado is corrupt, right? <laughs> I haven't said anything. No, no, no. It seemed, you seem to be, so you seem to be yes, Are you? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. See, because once the leader is lost every moral, ethical obligation and power to hold your people accountable. He who is without sin be the first to cast the stone. So, so you, you have cut a part for yourself that you are corruption free. And then I take it a step further. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that Ghana, elect me. And you see Kofi Kranting, the next president of Ghana, we give you the mantle. The first thing I would do is strip away all the presidential exemptions. Put into the constitution that if I cause financial loss to the state, loss to the state, capital punishment. Who have said that? I would amount to change the entire um, constitution. We're going to do that. We're going to do that because if you don't do that, we don't save this country. These clowns who keep stealing and they get away with it. Hey, Uncle IMF, uh, we don't have any money. Bail us out. The IMF puts it back on the table. Ah, six, hey, 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 hey. let's pay wages. Do, do, do you think within four years, for instance, if you're given opportunity, you'll be able to do all these things you're doing and turn the country back around? We will put the country back on its feet. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying we're going to be able to pay all our debts and all, but the systems will begin to be in place for the first month. The first announcement 
the moment I'm so sworn in, the first announcement, the first speech that I give will get people's heads spinning with the changes. Which is? I can't tell you. Why not? Uh, because, uh, hey, God, are you going to be, uh, uh, you ready for this, man? Yeah. No, we're going to make changes. We're going to make some serious changes. Some but serious changes. people that are working for the government, obviously you will still use some of them. The NDC, the NDP people, people you are criticizing now, they're still going to be part of the people that you're Absolutely, using. absolutely. So the brains that you're complaining about that we don't have, are the same brains you're going to more like recycle. Mm -hmm. So how are you going to do that? The environment determines everything, and I'll prove it to you. Here you go. Um, I'm not saying any of your friends are criminals, or but maybe you know some friends who you went to school with who uh, maybe they were not on top of their game, they were lazy, uh, you know, their character was a little bit edgy. They leave from here, and they call you from Switzerland, U.S., Singapore, and they say, man, Diego, it's a different world out here. And hey, I go to work. I get there at eight o'clock. I don't da 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 da. And you're like, this is the same clown I used to be in school with. Mm -hmm. Now this guy's talking like he's a minister of finance. Because guess what? The environment has changed them. Mm -hmm. Right or right? I mean, we all have friends. Yeah. What, how did the environment change them? Now you see, and this is the genius that when you create an airtight environment, you see. The West, they don't create environments for good people. This is the biggest mistake our leaders do not understand. Let me prove it to you. Okay. You don't create an environment hoping that Diego is going to come to work at 8 o'clock and uh, uh, interview a guest. And, uh, and then if, oh, man, Diego, once I'm on team view, oh, Diego. Uh, well, guess what? There's an electronic card. Uh, uh, it's called a comp card. Yeah. The moment you get in there, your it's comp card right. registers you. Yeah. So at the end of the week, your supervisor takes a look at that. Uh, to, uh, uh, looks at that and says, "Oh, Diego was not at work on Wednesday. Uh, he wasn't. Oh, he was late. Okay. So Diego, we've warned you the first time. Don't do this again." Diego comes to work the next week late. Diego, we sorry, we love you, but you gotta go. We get somebody else to replace you. Simple. Now the person who comes in says, "Good guy, Diego here. What happened? Oh, he was late two times. What? Two times? Didn't even give him a third try. Wow, I was planning on being late 16 times, and maybe on the 17th time be considered." Let me give you an analogy of that. So yesterday, one media house. Um, claim they have not been paid for nine months. They decided to go on strike, and they, they their managers pair the story we are seeing on social media. They don't understand how come the media, which is one part of the workforce in Ghana, uh, they put somebody there to host the show. For instance, just TV. The moment it leaves, the show looks a bit somewhere. Ah, mm -hmm. And the deduction I was getting from this is that I'm using just the media as an example. When they take that person off or the person leaves, decides to leave, whoever comes in is not able to match up to that level. Mm -hmm. Don't you think there's a similar challenge we are facing in terms of human resource development? Absolutely, and I explain that to that you. The president as a minister, he won't get anybody competent enough to finish. That's, that's, that. listen, I have all the answers. All the answers. You can't have all the answers. I do. I do with this economy. Oh, I listen, I have all the answers to at least make Ghana a much, much better place than you see now. Because all the answers I have, big C, common sense. <laughs> it's not common actually. Oh, it's very common. Uh, let me explain common to you. Okay. So now, when you build an institution or an agency based on personality, you have the problem. When you build an institution based on systems, you don't have that problem because you see, what, what is a system? A system is a behavioral performance mechanism that you input into a plan with an expectation that's consistent. So if 
you let's say for instance you were doing the show when a person comes in they go through a very specific orientation this is how you sit you got to wear a white shirt and a vest and you speak to the camera you these are the questions you have. you systematize it mm -hmm. so anybody who goes through that orientation they tr they are trained to do the same thing so the 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 personality element is sliver very small mm. it doesn't it almost doesn't have any effect you Once know the way it comes back to the brains you're talking about but this is what the I'm brain saying. the person is bringing might not be up to what the other person had but because they go through a system you bring them to that same par is it possible it's always McDonald's mm -hmm. it's the most successful franchise restaurant franchise in the world right mm -hmm. the people who work there are high school dropouts really <laughs> mm. <laughs> just like with every other franchise the fact that you're a high school dropout doesn't necessarily mean you don't have the brains you may have the brains but maybe academically you're not that good but this is the point the point is none of that matters it's the system that causes you to perform a certain way that's consistent. When there is there is that consistency, then there is an expectation that nothing can change. That's why the franchises always make more money, because it's a turnkey system. It's called the turnkey system. Mm. You put them through a very specific orientation of expectation and performance. And you believe you can do that to every other institution here in Ghana when you're given the mandate? If you don't do or you are not able to do that to every agency in Ghana, just because you have the most of the agencies doing that, it pressure cooks the agencies that are not on that scale. Because the expectation is so high around, it pressure cooks you into formation. All right, let's wrap up the IMF conversation. Um, today, but did you understand that point though? I do, I do. Okay, know. good. Um, what would you tell them? Like, should you be part of the team? Who, IMF? I'm just hypothetically. Should I will be? not be part of the IMF <laughs> team. <laughs> we are there. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, you're part of the team. What would you put on the table? Okay, to so we, we, we got we to gotta offload our, uh, you know, the government. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, the flood means releasing the yeah, yeah, we, uh, materials. Listen, we could use at this point of our lives, you think that that would be the main solution, the th main idea to put out. Okay, so listen, two billion dollars is not going to do anything, two billion dollars is a flicker. The diaspora brings in six billion plus every year. It's amazing why we don't go to the diaspora, you know why? Because the diaspora has lost faith in this government. Six billion peanuts. It's money that they bring every year, so you know that this money has nothing to do with their livelihood. They spend every year. Six billion. How do they get that? How do what mean? Diaspora. Well, Ghanaians living abroad work. Okay. And out of All their right. incomes they right. bring in that money to support their families, families because of health care yeah. job da 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 okay. da, da. so now if you were to change that and say you know what the clinton global initiative says that with the remittance we send in it's it's for every dollar we send in we have at least three dollars in reserves mm -hmm. so if the diaspora is bringing six billion and they could bring six times three that's nine. Something that'll be eighteen, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have bringing into the system in a short term eighteen billion dollars, do you know what that would do to the economy? But guess what? The same NDC MPP saying, "Hey, we're not going to let you vote." Matter of fact, we're going to make life so difficult for you. And this guy, your friend, uh, saying digitization, go to um, the business registry. Mm -hmm. And see, you fill out an encyclopedia of paperwork. I went in there a couple of months ago. First day, light off. Second day, oh, our computers are not working well. Oh, and then you wait. Oh, come next week. Come next week. We do all the paperwork. You show up and say, oh, I can't help you. We're on strike. This is how you run a company. 
I'm in New York in my pajamas, I could go on the Department of Corporations and in 12 minutes set up a business, get my tax ID number and get going. 12 minutes. So if you want a diaspora to come here, you would have thought that you will set systems up for them to come and be able to integrate into the system. Everything here is to stop you from coming. And you need your brain power to elevate. You don't find anything good at all in Ghana as you speak. No, there are a lot of good things, but they, right now it's not relevant because we are dying. It, listen, mm -hmm. when the patient is dying, mm -hmm. when you take a patient to the ICU and they are, suffer they are in a trauma situation and they are dying, you don't worry about how well they did their nails. You got beautiful nails, by the way, dear. Thank you. You don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. You don't worry about how they have cut their hair and it's not important the patient is dying you want me to talk about how nice you look <laughs> no okay you're, I like your vest is that good enough can we move on yeah. okay I, I like uh, okay yeah. go ahead and talk about okay. what you're talking so about so that's the, you see how annoying that is yeah. that's annoying you are to me right now asking mm -hmm. oh you don't find anything good about what's that got to do with we dying do you get it so you talk about the critical things to give us some sustainability then you talk about all the pretty stuff because the pretty stuff will not matter anyway when the patient dies right or right okay all right okay so do you get it now let me go I want to answer this question how you take care of corruption because it's important to so like I said corruption is on three levels mm -hmm. the first level is like Obama said you need strong institutions ah so institutional infrastructure is the first thing you need to set up what, uh, what is institutional infrastructure? Institutional infrastructure is making sure that ev that which everybody needs to have to be able to perform at 100% is available to them. Is that what we have in our agencies? Hmm. Hmm. That's a uh, short code for <laughs> ridiculous. Okay, so institutional infrastructure, and the next thing is then you come to the systems. Hmm. Systems are three-prong, objective, mechanical part of the system discipline discipline is accountability mm. where have you gone to see accountability in any agency in government you go to ministries right now it's close to nine o'clock the almost kind paper ministries they're not doing any work. They're reading newspapers that the government have circulated to them. Why does the government need to pay newspaper? Do you, have it, do you know how annoying when I see that? I'm like, these guys, what to newspaper they are coming be as a year, Juma? Ah, yeah, yeah, Tiaka. Does that make sense? It's in a, they would have to, to read Hey. What's how many TV? TV no crowd, yeah man, on our side, we kum kum bad ya. Wait, which has, what is that gonna do with Ghana? Yeah, I'm paying for it. Kum kum bad ya, or we kum kum bad ya, no, yeah, then. I mean, it's, it's, it, it blows my mind when I go around to these ministries. And you have six, seven people sitting in an office doing anything, waiting for boss to come in. Boss nearby and ask be I say, oh, boss, uh, they don't do anything. What happened to agriculture? We need to put $10 billion to agriculture every year for the next 10 years. Revolutionize everything in Ghana. Give the agro-based industries something for them to develop. So we can export some value, add value to our produce, Gold. Do we set the price? No. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I still want to I put it hypothetically. If you are there, the things you're gonna propose mm -hmm. do to the IMF. This IMF thing. You said have, you, you wouldn't. You wouldn't go there. In the we first wouldn't go there have because we wouldn't. That's where we are right now. So uh, my are, mind, my mind doesn't think like. I'm sitting with the IMF because it's an impossibility for my thinking. I'll be very honest with you. So how should you negotiate if you wouldn't be there, for instance, if you're telling them okay. what to do? So first of all, the $2 billion they bring in cannot mm. do anything. Mm. So they shouldn't take it at all? 
I don't know what they, I, I want to get into their mind to see, because they're going to pay, okay, so more than half the money is going to pay, go to wages. Okay, mm -hmm. they're still going to get, listen, this is what's painful, Ghana for, listen to me. We are in hard times. We, okay, so we have to get the IMF or the whole government shuts down. Okay, we get the money from IMF, and guess what? They're still going to get all their bonuses and get all their paychecks and still drive all their SUVs to get, uh, take all the 45 gallons of fuel every week. All of the announcements should be shut down right now. Again, well, that's another question. No, listen to me. Yeah? When drastic measures. I, I feel some of the things you're proposing it doesn't look too real. To offload the ministers is not real. Offloading, yes, but asking them to walk. No. Or pick trotro. Okay, so that's an extreme. But what I'm saying is, is you have to park your SUVs. Mm. All the vouchers, all the benefits, all the bonuses gone. You don't get it any longer. So Article seventy one. Excratia, everything scrapped, nothing. Hmm. You, t everybody taking a pay cut, mm -hmm. fifty percent. Done that already, thirty percent. We go down fifty of what is left. I'm serious. Fifty again of what is left. Of course, after the thirty. Ah, now we just listen. Well, how much money do you make? You, you can't live off. Okay, so now it's almost like you saying said this is impossible. Why is it impossible? Somebody pays for your house for you. Mm -hmm. They give you allowance for your car. They give you petrol. They give you gardeners, bars, all of that Cooks. nonsense. And yeah, two paychecks were fifty a wusu. What aside from food? Did you know yet? He goes to his communities. He sorts some people out. He has their education. Yeah, yeah. Who 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 nyansa mana anka wo nyesa. That's the problem. And the infrastructure that you need to have in place so that we have a humming society you have not done. To be yeah, yeah, you have to go and give money. Because no message say why I'm a society no say Ubia would do age beer. You you have pension coming in, you have some you have homes, elder homes set up so that when people There's get to already that is taking care of the certain categories, four categories of people that need support. Yeah, but our social services and, uh, are seriously dented. Right? We haven't we don't have a social system. You go outside, maybe yeah, but on four basic two. Right? Mm -hmm. And everywhere you go, there are people who are going through problems and we don't have a social system. That's the fact. So these are some of the things and this is why we are proposing that we do a national development plan. Mm -hmm. When you do it with the IMF, first thing you need to do, we need to do a national development plan. Mm -hmm. And we have to map up not only for the short term but for the long term. So for immediate goals, we don't even have the real look at what's really happened internally, so we mm -hmm. can't even mm -hmm. really analyze. Yeah. Yeah. But for the long term, we need to scale down our parliamentarians to 40, from 275 to 40 parliamentarians, well, 40, uh, four parliamentarians per region, 10 regions, mm -hmm. go back to 10 regions. Uh, ministers, we need to bring it to 20. One minister. Mm. So for 10 uh, mi mi uh, ministries, we have 10. Because you see, the thing is, they're not even bringing any income. They cannot prove income. Because you see, the simple math to this is, Diego, if there's a minister bringing in into Ghana $10 million a year, they should be paid $2 million a year. I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. Because there's still $8 million, mm -hmm. right? But you bring in hundred thousand. The expenses from your ministry is hundred and twenty thousand. It just doesn't make sense. That's not fiscally prudent. How they're running the country. So okay, that so long term is you got to cut down all these things, mm -hmm. reduce, reduce the, like, Of course, what, we're going to do, do that, okay. and then. The all the interventions like the free senior high school thing, uh, plentiful food and jobs, all those things. They said we are being told that there's a possibility of they asking that they cut it down or something like of that. Of course, it stuff. doesn't because uh, it, they are all social policies. You are talking about social policies, but so. just cutting it down. Listen, the idea of the free senior high school, and I said it here many years ago when I came here that the idea is good. The policy doesn't make sense, and the way it's been 
engineer it doesn't make mm -hmm. sense there are just too many loopholes for people to steal money okay so are you with me so we have to make it tight there are so many people I don't need free SHS for my children because I can afford to put my children uh, you, you okay. me? So now you if you just say them. free SHS I'll take advantage of it because mm -hmm. why don't I want to save money but, but you pay I'll, taxes also. but I'll cut corners to be able to afford and I would want the money to go to somebody who may not be earning what I earn I, now I'm not earning much but at least I could put food on my table mm -hmm. for now mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so that whole thing needs to be balanced properly there's so many people if you make more than listen 10,000 CDs a month you even 5,000 CDs a month you should be paying something towards and you what you do is you graduate it you ratchet mm -hmm. it's a, called a ratchet system where based on how much you make you pay a certain amount but it cannot be totally free it should be free to only people who make a median income of maybe a thousand cities a month or less okay all right let's let's move away from the IMF but still tithing uh, prior to this the uh, finance minister the vice president the president himself have been talking about homegrown solutions mm -hmm. uh, rather than go to the IMF because uh, three years ago they had exited so they didn't see the need to go when all the others let's say the minority were championing the fact that we have to go your prediction had come in earlier uh, other advocates and so, so civil society organizations are all saying that there's a need for us to go and all that they said no they believe in home growth solutions hence they brought in the e-levy mm -hmm. what do you think about the e-levy should we scrap it oh, off at this gosh. moment the e-levy is such a disaster okay let me tell you why i have a problem with the e-levy and it just goes to prove my point that the leaders are not thinkers okay so let me start get ready for this so we came in and the argument was our banking system was all messed up so we need to uh, sh well I won't even say reform it and the, it, it, that's what it should have done they should have reformed it made changes now who's responsible for the banking system? The Bank of Ghana and the Securities and Exchange Commission, right? Mm -hmm. So they dropped the ball, they were sleeping all this while. NDC didn't catch it, MPP for six years they didn't catch it. Well, by the time they did the banking uh, cleaning. cleaning up, it had been at least after the first term. Mm -hmm. But about- You commend them for that? No, because they did it the wrong way. And uh, the re uh, Diego, listen to me. If I come to you right now and I say to you, Diego, that you know, you've not been eating well, we need to cleanse your system. I have to be careful how I do the cleansing because if I give you a potion for you to take and I do not manage it properly, I could shut down your liver and I could kill you. Mm -hmm. Because the, the idea is good, mm -hmm. but the way I administer it could be fatal. Exactly. Cannot, the banking systems we had, they were supplying, they were the arteries to all the other informal sectors. Mm -hmm. Now, take a look at this. 80% of our employment comes from the micro, medium, uh, uh, and small enterprises. Mm -hmm. Micro, small, and medium enterprises, mm -hmm. right? 80% mm -hmm. of our employment. Of our employment percent of that comes from the informal sector mm -hmm. now the way they do the commerce banking systems now they're not functioning properly but at least they are the torturers of the financial industry so they give us mm -hmm. some type of mm -hmm. balance yeah. okay so when you come in you cannot r r just wreck this from us and say hey, listen it's not working so well so let's take it no you reform it because if you take it away disposition that totally there's a ripple effect in the oh, system so they came and they took it out and dispositioned the whole system the system is out of whack but what they should have done is reform. look at this because you have this network of banking systems that were not working properly a company is called um, uh, uh, MTN, you, are you familiar with that company? Mm -hmm. Okay. So MTN comes in and says, you know what? The banking, the Ghana has a huge informal sector. Let me come in and act as a, it's called a payment aggregator. Mm -hmm. A payment aggregator is a person who puts themselves between the banking system 
and the people. Mm -hmm. So the commerce goes through them and they represent you at the banking level because you don't have the credentials to establish a bank. Mm -hmm. So now they, the uh, MTM becomes a payment aggregator and they represent the people to the bank. Yes, yeah. The <laughs> problem is the bank is not the sovereign's property. Mm -hmm. The bank is their bank, which is outside of the country, which is in itself a huge security threat. You see, Interior should have put a clamps on that and say, no, we can't do that. But they allow them to do that. They take your fingerprints, they take all your biometric data, and it's going to them that is owned by a foreign nation, yeah. which means that they could just hit a button, hey, flick the light on, and they could shut the whole system down because they have our own. So now, this is what happens. Sure. So the monies that should have been circulating in the um, financial uh, uh, markets all now goes through MTN because they've shut down all now they shut it down with three over three billion dollars in itself with a fraction of that money they could have reformed all these banks and kept the monies in there but now look listen to the genius if they had allowed this banking system to be functional and reformed it now the monies that could have been going through the MTN now goes through our banking system because they've reformed it now if the average monies that a depositor keeps in the system is 50 cities because we have merchants yeah. with MTN yeah. and only 30 percent only 30 percent use it that would be 50 times 10 million which is 500 million mm -hmm. if now with every banking system there is a running balance a running balance is the monies that you take out I put in your buddy takes out mm -hmm. so that there is a median amount that stays, that's a running back. So if there is just 1%, we, if with well, the 500 million that circulates in the mobile money, if we just diversify that into all our banking systems, and Bank of Ghana took 1% of that 500 million a day, we would have $5 million, 5 million CDs every day. Imagine if we we're putting 5 million CDs every day towards youth employment, mm. towards children and women's health, mm. towards vocational TVET. 5 million CDs a day coming from nowhere. This is money that the got just 1%. So in effect, the yield of you was, is a non-starter. Why do you have a lead? Uh, and even if you're going to do e levy, do it for the big transactions for the people who have money in already the banking system. But don't give the money to MTN. That's my problem. Why do you have MTN making all the money? It's because the banking systems have failed. Uh, be, and another problem also is we don't have a credit system in Ghana. Mm. That's another big problem. Why do we? We don't have a credit system because we don't have an integrated national ID and address system. It has been done. Uh, How long does it take? Back. Six years? Well, it's, Do you see what I'm the saying? Is ongoing. Yeah, yeah, but you see, that's a failure's talk. Oh. You know, anybody who talks like that, <laughs> failure. Okay, because you could do that in a year. You came in, if you did your analysis before you came in, then you know Ghanaians. to go ahead and do the Ghana card within a year. Absolutely. For the entire 31 million people in Absolutely. Ghana. Absolutely. It's so easy. Really? Of course. Listen. Uh, anyway. It's... The you development of the equipment alone is a huge, huge charge. Because what equipment? You see... One is okay. Used, so first of all, so let's go back, scale it back. <laughs> we don't have, and this is what we have proposed, you have to have what we call a national data repository system. If we had a national data repository system, then, and this is why about the NDC, I laugh because they failed and gave us a failed system and we continue with a failed system. And that's why we're in this situation. So um, the NDC, uh, well, forget the NDC, but if we had a national data repository, system, the moment you are born, you go into that system. Okay. The moment you die, you take it off that system automatically yeah. because yeah. certificates are issued. Birth yeah. certificate is issued, you go in, death certificate is issued. Ghost names, by the way. Say again? 
We're still battling with ghost names. But you uh, see, this is another problem. Mm -hmm. it because we didn't have that. Exactly. Do you see where yeah. everything now comes leads to another the domino effect of the, so if you don't do one thing properly mm. it leads to so many other then you now you come you an excuse merchant mm. excuse oh the, oh we, because we don't have this oh why why do you do oh because we don't then you keep giving excuses and this is why we need to start address the problem from the root cause that is why you should give credit to the new Patriotic party for trying to put new what new Patriotic party for doing the national card Ghana card thing. Yeah. That said, the phone, <laughs> the phone lines will be activated in a bit. Uh, but in the meantime, if you're watching, you can send us your messages on the WhatsApp line. Any questions you want to ask Kofi Kranti and the independent candidates, uh, respect to all the conversations we'll be having so far. We're talking about the flat earlier. We had a conversation about the IMF and then we diverted into the e levy conversation. And in case all these things are um, it's something that you want to ask a question about, feel free to join the conversation and send your messages on WhatsApp. And alternatively, uh, when the phone line is activated, you can call us and then also ask your questions. Speaking of the uh, messages, I've got some, I think, two messages coming through. Um, so good morning, Mr. Producer. I'm enjoying the conversation. I like this man. Who is he? I would like to campaign for him. Uh, he has wisdom and understanding and skills to turn things around. He is a man for the job. He is a smart thinker. I tell you, I would like to speak with him. My name is Reverend Matthew Saleh. Keep up the good work. All right. So he wants to link up with you and then support your, your team. And then, good morning, you, Brother Kofi Quarantine. Good work done from Kwesi of Fe. Abanse. Abanase, sorry, Ekropon Ekriapim, he sends that one. So you can also join the conversation by sending your messages on the WhatsApp line, which is on your screen. And then, as I said, when time is due for us to activate the phone lines, we'll do that for you to call and also share your two cents about the conversations we're having. Um, well, you saw What's, something? No, I saw something here. Mm -hmm. What's this say? I haven't actually paid attention to it. Mm. Uh, tempered. <laughs> no, no, no. What? Wait, I can't read too well. What, what does that say? Come on, you're smart. <laughs> no, no, no. Somebody I, just said you're smart. No, no, but can you just read it for Hello. me, please? What you does... saw it. You can read it yourself. Oh, man, this guy's mean. <sighs> That's uh, a compliment. Thank you very much. Uh, the, 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 what does it say? <laughs> does it say something made in China? <laughs> I made in China. This is the studios of HS, HB uh, made in China stuff. What happened to made in Ghana? Um, let's talk about the National Cathedral. You mentioned oh it earlier. Gosh, man. That's, that's um, and then as much as we know, it's a promise made by the president to God that um, hopefully when he becomes uh, president, he's going to build a National Cathedral. Uh, a biblical allusion will be that of uh, Solomon when God... Um, I mean, his father wanted to build a temple, but God said, no, his son would do that. So once Solomon came to the throne, he decided to build a temple. The temple didn't serve as uh, a family relic or something, or bequeathing to the family, but it served the entire people of Jerusalem. So the president's idea was that with the building of the National Cathedral, which was uh, supposed to serve the of course, more like a tourist attraction or so people coming in and then we'll get direct investment and all that foreign direct investment sort of uh, which is also going to help the country in a way but it looks like people are shooting it down you okay it's the wrong idea in the first place okay uh bishop diego um since you have too many pastors in my family i don't need that title uh, okay so well you're well yes but the appeal list. Okay, so uh, I'm glad to know. Uh, I'll check. Make yeah, sure. It can happen to yours, though. Uh, I might but say anyhow, from you. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm a born Presbyterian. I don't have anything wrong about a cathedral. Um, the only thing, um, or a couple of things I have to say is timing was wrong, number one. I think nobody would challenge that timing uh was wrong with the, the, the decision to build to build the cathedral is another problem um if you wanna uh, uh kind of uh, make an attempt to bring about some type of economic uh, uh development or commerce you look and you start something there because with the cathedral comes a string of other um, 
that businesses are, that start. So, so I think, it. I mean, uh, listen, um, Dodua Road, Dodua, um, uh, we could have done this thing on Winneba Road, we could have done, there's so many places to do it, just not in that congestion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then the monies that were paid up, if the cathedral is supposed to be a Christian cathedral, as mm -hmm. it is said mm -hmm. in the documents, uh, the problem is, it's supposed to be, uh, if this is supposed to be a national cathedral owned by Ghana, mm -hmm. then the owner's aspect, its registration should not be personal. Okay, okay so uh, I don't know why you would want people to be on the registry as um, people who have shares in a venture that's supposed to be state-owned. So that's, that's uh, listen, that's, that's not me saying it, that's just fact. Unfortunately, we're still in our forest reserve. Okay, so uh, th this cathedral thing is enough for the president to be impeached. And really? what did the NDC do? Uh, NDC, they are a group of really I really don't understand the NDC. It's like a tilapia jumping out of the water to say, let me go catch, you know, uh, some food outside in the sun. Your domain for performance and effectiveness is in parliament. Now, and all of a sudden, you stripped all of that away and you are in the street demonstrating. Your power is not in the street, NDC. Your power is in parliament. That's why we put you there. Why are you in the street? Does it make sense? You have been, you have only been in parliament for six years with these guys and now you're finding out that they're not good for purpose? How do you for, mean by they are in the street? They're demonstrating. That, oh, okay. Right? Okay. They're demonstrating to the Ghanaian people as to say that, hey, we're against this E-Levy, we're that, against this... It was Arise Ghana. You say, I was going to get into that conversation. About but Rice Ghana Russia. is NDC. It's NDC fuel. Benan Mora is not an NDC. Who cares? I mean, is but, uh, who? Benan Mora is not an NDC person. It's fueled by He's NDC. He's with the PNC. Uh, uh, yeah. And a few yeah. others I know. But, but these are, are but NDC, these, so the, all these, all these other. Dankanamu and OPEC uh, director. Uh, yeah, but Samsung see, NDC. this is another problem with the Ghana uh, political system. All the other smaller parties are sponsored by NDC or MPP. They, they do their dirty work for them. We all know that. So but don't even start the conversation on that. The bottom line is uh, Arise Ghana was sponsored by the N NDC. I will get into that conversation about demonstrations, but I want to f you to finish up on the cathedral. Um, in your view, should we complete it? becomes a national okay. relic so be... no it's, it can be a national relic listen if i am president today all the projects that have been started by ndc mpp that are uncompleted we need to finish because it's an asset you can't leave it to rot we're doing a few so far doing a few what i think trying to complete and then also what happened to the hospital sorry what happened to the hospitals Oh, a ferry so and there's, there's one in the, in the eastern region that mm -hmm. about 600 beds has been left to rot. He's trying to complete it. Okay, you're uh, just coming, to, you're just coming to that after six years? The railways, he's also working on them. Well. Okay, so listen, these are all loser talk. So I won't even allow them to even, because they have... It's not like... What's the patient? Nothing else is important. So we need to keep the patient alive. While we, do, the sexy stuff could come up later. We need to keep the patient on the mission. We need to get the patient, well, all the vitals should be up. You, do you see what I'm saying? So it, you cannot bypass all the vital things and do things that are pretty. Mm. Okay. Cathedral ba ba building is pretty to me mm. when you know you're heading to the IMF. And if you say, oh, they didn't know they were going to who was keeping watch on our finances? The destruction team? The destruction management team? But until until Thursday 30th. Sorry. But this is the that should scare you. Because all the indi listen, you don't have any industry. You have four hundred billion cities of debt. Eighty one percent 
of your eighty-one uh, percent debt of your GDP. debt is is out, uh, taken out of your GDP. Yeah. Over three million students graduates are out of work. Inflation is twenty-seven point six percent. Thank anyway, you. Add, uh, add, add to that. Hold Keep on. going. I've got some few messages that so I need to how, read, and then uh, the phone line yeah. interactive also for you to call. We have a conversation with the man Kofi Grantin. He's an independent candidate. Uh, he's sharing his views about the matters horizon that uh, everybody's talking about. So he has uh, his sense to share regarding that. So I've got some few messages. Let let me quickly get into that, and then you probably if there are questions, you answer them, and then we'll pick the phone lines, uh, phones as well. The calls that will come through. So this one says, "Good morning. I'm Hamza from Sotum." I'm enjoying the conversation. Mr. Kofi have almost all the answers to your questions. I like him and I like his accent. And I think this man is what we need for the country. I see him like an encyclopedia. He knows everything. Uh, this one says, hi team. Uh, can you ask Kofi what he's going to do with social housing system in order to address sanitation and housing problems? Kindly note it down. And then uh, I truly agree 100% with many of his ideas and solutions. Mr. Kofi Grantin has shared so far, uh, the biggest solution for Ghana is hard work and honesty in everything. I'm looking for an opportunity to collaborate and help the best I can. Robert from Accra sent that one. Good morning. My name is Joshua. I really love the show. Mr. Kofi Grantin, you are very good. My ministers need to be sacked because they, they're wasting our money. I wish I can follow you. Well said. Okay, and then the final one, okay, not the final one. A person like him had confirmed the argument and thoughtful disagreement I've been making with people about the deformities of this country. Unfortunately, add your name, uh, kindly add your name to it and probably where you're texting from also. And then this one says, this is my first time seeing such a great genius in Ghana speak. Such personalities need the support they need to get things, uh, to get things much better. Thanks so much, Mr. Kofi Grant and Robert from Accra. And yes, this is a generational thinker. I will vote for him. It's coming from Maggie. All right, so you might want to answer the question regarding the... Um, Saglame. Yeah, yeah, Saglame. The housing uh, issue. Uh, okay, so let's start with Saglame. Sanitation also. Remember, I started by asking uh, about the drilling system that we need to fix. Uh, oh, God, yeah, talking about $5 billion right. uh, needed to fix it. Uh, sometimes I'm sad, though. I won't lie. Sometimes I'm really no. sad. Um, I mean, we come here, we make jokes and stuff, but sometimes it really gets me. I won't lie. Because this is so simple. Anyway, with Saglame, you go and you build. I went to Saglame myself. I went into the rooms. I took videos. You have tears in your eye? Yeah, because it's, 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 you see, you, see, you don't understand when you have worked Take a deep breath. All right, I, um, let me pick a call. Uh, I have somebody calling from Amasaman. Um, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, um, could you raise your voice a little bit for me? Hello? Yeah, your name, your name, you're calling from Amasaman, right? Your name, please. Yes, yes, I'm really. I can't hear you too clear. Could you reposition yourself, please? Hello? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Please, my name is Richard Marty. I'm calling from Amazon. Richard, okay, please go ahead with your submission. I'm really enjoying it. Okay. Robert, um, I'm sorry, but you may want to reposition and then call back. Okay, when you're calling, please make sure your the volume of your TV set is very low. Or all right, thank you. Uh, you can the phone lines are active. You can also call and then share your questions or any thoughts, any advice, anything that you want to say with respect to the conversation we're having so far. Um, I hope you put yourself together. Yeah. So all right. So you're talking about right. the house and all right. So listen, we go into Saglam and we take two hundred million dollars. And we build a community, we just throw mortar. That's all we did. Now, the buildings are nice, okay? They're not, this is not, see, what Ghanaians don't understand is, not Ghanaians, but elitists, vertical integration. Vertical integration is 
building no, up. Yeah. They in Saglame, they are a building has nine units, three on each floor, three floors. Mm -hmm. Sorry to catch you. Let me pick Zach's call and sure. then continue. Good morning, Zach. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, please uh, go ahead with your submission. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling from Nima. Nima, go ahead. Yeah, I'm calling from Nima. I can hear you. Please go ahead. Okay, my name is Zachary. Yeah, I like this man very, very much. I just, I just want to meet him. How can I meet him? I just want to meet him. Um, before he leaves, he will share his social media handles with you. Probably want to get in touch with him. That's my number. Yeah. So okay. I just want to. All right. Okay. Thank you very much for That's calling. Right. Zach. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, so all right, so we go in there and we spit this brick and mortar mm -hmm. just through there. So they they have ten buildings in in a row, mm -hmm. ten buildings yeah. each nine. I think about one thousand five hundred units. We're told it, it was supposed to be a five thousand unit. Okay, okay. They have completed almost twenty, about twenty three, twenty four hundred now. Okay. Okay? okay, so they did have the job. Okay, and now all the electrical wires mm -hmm. have been ripped out. All the fixtures have been ripped out. So it's just the fiscal structure there. there. If to make it livable, you have to reinstall everything, everything. Which there was also an issue about the sewer system that wasn't constructed. I don't know whether you they did. That. Well, the sewer system we lifted one of the sewers up. Mm -hmm. There were tunnels. We okay. don't know to what extent it's connected. Okay, All right. But the tunnels were laid. There were the piping were mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. on sub subway piping. Okay. So it looks like the contractor did a good job for the mm -hmm. most part. The only part that I'm not in agreement with was the fact that they spread over too huge an area. Okay. They could have constructed this thing in maybe four tower mm -hmm. blocks. Mm -hmm. Now another problem is, is who builds like that? You see, and this is what makes me emotional because it's like nobody thinks for Ghanaians. Nobody cares for Ghanaians. You know, you put buildings there, no markets, no shopping malls, mm -hmm. no parks. And the road leading to the place I hear it's quite uh, somewhere. Hang uh, 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 <laughs> on, let me pick Yao uh, on the line. Good morning, Yao. Hello, Yao. Good morning. Yeah. Nice of you to join us. Please go ahead with the submission. Uh, so what's my country? If not even a hospital, grounds. recreational grounds, parks, water yeah. parks. So, you know, life, Diego, what, what is, you know, so everybody treats Ghanaians like we are dirt, including our own ministers. That's why we don't get any respect when we go outside. And it, it, how is it not surprising that they still go out there able to negotiate and get the money? That this is where I talked about the person who picks the cup and puts it back on the table. I don't think they're benefiting from that process. Because you mean those who are even lending the money to us are benefiting? Because it's in order of mm. keeping you dependent. Let me pick this last caller and then we'll wrap it up. Um, hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. 
God bless you. Morning, I'm talking from Katsua. Okay. I will have my house. Yes, yeah. the quality of your audio is very, very bad. I'm sure it has to do with your location. So if you can reposition yourself, uh, that will help. I can barely hear anything that you're talking about. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I just think it's a man we need in Ghana. Okay. These are the lectures and stuff we need. Hmm. It's indeed a man, a man. And he's a man of God. Okay. Just speaking out of intelligence. All right. Listen. All right. Thank you very much for calling. <laughs> Okay, thank you. All right. So, you know, you you look Saglome is mm. a substandard housing. Mm. The the building itself has been constructed well, but mm. it would be better if I spoke to an engineer the other day about, hey man, the Saglome building should have been done vertically. He's like, na kufi o wajunye juma. On se mu mu fiabuti ba se mu nimnyansa. Power, ibenya power eh. But you see, but this is the thinking. OC Dan no nim say power bear problem into when seat with elevators in mind OC mm. say yeah be nante akoso you know I'm you sure know, they didn't take care of the people with disability also oh now government buildings cry here disability access na sagla be wa kwa i mean but this is you see but this is what i'm saying who thinks for us ghana who really thinks for us i will think for ghana listen i promise you i'll make ghana one of the best nations to live on in ghana Right. On that note, I want to say a very big thank you for joining us today. It's been quite an insightful conversation, thought provoking and uh, quite educative as well. And uh, we want to wish you all the best with your intentions of becoming the next president of Ghana. Um, you have any message for uh, yes? Uh, viewers I, I well, I, I, listen. I, I want to thank uh, the viewers and uh, anyone who is supporting us. Uh, there are a bunch of people now who are really starting to see the truth in what we started talking about many years ago and this is why I run for 2020 and this is why the MPP and NDC got me off the ballot that I forged things I didn't forge anything you know but 2024 we're going again and we need your support to be on the ballot and we need the support more importantly of the Ghanaians living abroad you need to come in and support us you need to come in we need your ideas we need your money 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 we need money because we fighting uh with lions um, and they have the biggest share of everything you know so we need the diaspora to come in uh the Ghanaians living abroad you are part of our extended family you only live away from us but th there's no way ghana is going to be able to pick up without you there's no way and maybe on another occasion i'll prove to you where the looming demographic uh, catastrophe mm -hmm. is actually worse than what we are going to experience in the next couple of years. Interesting. It, Can I show you your social media handles just in case somebody want to link up with you? Kofi Kranting GH, Kofi Kranting .com. If everything, I, matter of fact, let me make it simple. Kofi Kranting .com will give you access to pretty much everything. So get to Kofi Kranting .com and help us. Help us. We need the help. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you too. So on that solemn note, we'll wrap up the conversation today. I trust you've enjoyed it and uh, uh, keep watching out for just to be giving you the best in terms of conversations and education and everything else you need to make your day and also make the Ghana that we all believe in a better place to live. My name is William Diego Park. I'm going to take a quick turn out this one. When we come back, the man JK will be seated. <laughs> oh, so actually we're wrapping up the entire show. We're done today. Unfortunately, we've been... Um, Uh, I did this with my co host Stephanie George, and I'm produced by Shiro Kabe. And thanks to everybody in the MCR, the camera guys, and everything. God willing, tomorrow we're back. Healthy morning. Stay safe and be good. Catch you on the flip side. There's a difference between somebody who is confident and fearless and somebody who is disrespectful. Someone so I'm on my answer.
Your daddy pay face say what our party chain I know what I want say what I know Hey break it down Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy with the boy with the boy Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy Gonna see kind of money your day with the boy with the boy with the boy Okay see kind of money your day Lori Pine what I would see kind of 